This is Inside Troy Athletics. A look at what's going on and what's coming up for Troy University's Trojans. Now, here's your host for Inside Troy Athletics, Jonathan Sellers. Hello and welcome to Inside Troy Athletics. I'm your host, Jonathan Sellers, alongside Jeremy McLean, the Director of Athletics for Troy University. And uh, Jeremy, we're in the, in the midst of basketball season, right in the kind of the middle of that Sunbelt Conference slate, and it's getting pretty exciting. I know uh, the men picked up a big, much-needed win on Monday night, and uh, the women picked up a big win Saturday night after a tough loss last Thursday. So uh, kind of go over what's yeah. been happening recently. Yeah, it was an uh, important road swing uh, to Arkansas for both of those teams. Uh, you know, the women, like you said, um, on Thursday played Arkansas Little Rock, who's um, yeah, probably had a, a, a revenge on their minds right. because, uh, of course, we beat them in the uh, conference championship last year, and, and uh, they had a great squad last year and really good again this year. Both of our teams going into the game undefeated. and A uh, really good game. We, right. we got behind early and then fought our way back and, and uh, really um, just came up short from making that comeback. And so, uh, But then really responded well on Saturday with a win. Um, uh, at Arkansas State, and, and and so the women still just with a one one loss in conference right. play, and and so going over there and going one and one is is not the worst thing in the world. Right. I know they would love to have gotten both of them, but um, you know really still continue to be impressed with the way we're playing and uh, the way um, our players have responded, the coaching staff, and the challenges that have been you know been placed before them. And then on the men's side, really the same thing. Uh, you had two strong teams in in, in Arkansas State. And uh, in, our, in Arkansas Little Rock, and, and so on Saturday, uh, the men lost really a heartbreaker to uh, to uh, an Arkansas State team that I think at the time was 12 and six, okay. um, and um, really had a lead late and kind of went back and forth down to the wire and, and came out on the short end, but uh, responded very well uh, on Monday night, um, beating uh, Little Rock at their place, and, and um, you know a good win against a really good team, a team that was in the NCAA tournament last year and, and had had won a game in the tournament, so. Uh, hopefully a confidence booster for our guys right. to be able to pull out a close one there, uh, win it down the stretch, and and, uh, and look forward to, to them starting a homestand now in Trojan Arena. And I, I think I saw the stat, uh, in, in four losses that they've had in, in the Sun Belt, they've been by a combined 11 points. And that's tough for any team. That means you're just right there. Yeah. So a win like that against uh, Arkansas Little Rock is, is much needed. And as you said, could be a confidence boost, especially coming into home. Yeah, it really can be. You know, and I think – Kind of one of the things about our men's conference schedule too is it was a little bit front loaded. Mm. You know, we went on the road first three games. We played some of the tougher opponents uh, in the conference early. Uh, if you look at the standings, and, and and so you know they fought through some of that and lost some really close ones, as you said. So so hopefully it gives them a confidence coming back home. We got a three game home stand coming up to to uh, you know to um, to be successful and, and make a run here as we kind of get into the middle of conference play. And that home swing starts this week. Thursday, the women will play, and they'll face Georgia Southern. Correct. Doubleheader on Saturday, where both teams will face Georgia State, and then the men will face Georgia Southern on Monday. Right, that's right. And, and again, tough matchups. You know, it's, it's a tough um, conference swing. Just And really, really, we've talked about this before, but uh, in the Sun Belt right now, really every night is, is really going to be difficult. Right. And so, uh, so women, women have a great challenge there on Thursday and Saturday, as you said. Um, and, then, and then the men... Um, two teams they've already played as the women in, in Georgia State and Georgia Southern, but um, Georgia Southern is you know still undefeated in the conference on the men's side, so it'll be a really tough task. But glad to have them back at our place. And again, that, that was one of those games we lost on the men's side really late, um, early in the year, and, and so an opportunity to um, uh, you know to to have another shot at them on Monday. And there's really no excuses for fans not to come out to yeah. those games. It should be a, a good cool weekend. So you don't really want to be outside. You want to be in Trojan Arena with with your fellow Trojans. No doubt about it. And we really need it. We really need our students to come out. We need our fans to come out. You got Thursday, Saturday, Monday. You got a lot of opportunities to come in and and see really good basketball. Right. I mean, I think that's. Um, I can't say that enough. I think you just look at the quality of the, uh, the athletes that are on the floor, the quality of play across the Sun Belt on the men and the women's side right now. Um, you know, it's just it's great basketball, and it's right here in our backyard. And so I encourage all of our fans to come out and see it and, and uh, support these student athletes. And just a little look ahead, next Saturday will be a doubleheader against South Alabama, and that's become such a good rivalry between uh, these two schools, not only in football, but baseball, basketball, all the sports, softball included. And uh, so that will be a big one next Saturday. It will be. And, and this is what we kind of call our, our off week, where our, um, our single game week, where mm -hmm. we don't play two games that week. Uh, we'll just have – the one doubleheader against South Alabama, uh, who is our travel partner. So, um, 
really important. Uh, again, kind of completes that three-game homestand for both squads. Um, we went down to South Alabama to open play in conference play right after Christmas and uh, two really close games. Right. Women being successful and the men coming up just a point or two short. And so uh, we'll need everybody creating the right kind of atmosphere um, that following Saturday against South Alabama. Right. And I know uh, several other teams are, are getting underway. Tennis, both men's and women's, got to travel this weekend. Some success, a couple of losses, but overall a good start to the season for them. Yeah, it really has been. I think our coaches have been pleased with what they've seen. Uh, like you said, sometimes um, as you're starting the spring, you're, you're still trying to fill some things out. But um, we've had some good, uh, good victories, especially some good performances individually. And uh, so I think our coaches have been pleased to this point. Uh, and they'll really get cranked up, obviously, as as um, we, we continue on into the spring. And I know last week we talked about softball and baseball getting started. That'll be started soon. Um, I know signing day football, we, we can't go an episode right. without talking about football. So uh, signing day is February 1st, a little earlier this year, uh, but February 1st. And there will also be a signing day party like there was yeah. last year. Yeah, so uh, Wednesday, uh, February 1st, there'll be a signing day party. That, that day, like you said, is National Signing Day. And, and so we'll have a, an event that evening to unveil our class. And uh, I think our coaching staff, um, they feel really good about our group. We've got a chance, I think, to be uh, one of the top couple of uh, classes, so to speak, in, in the Sun Belt as far as rankings are concerned and, and uh, whatever stock you want to put in that. Right. Uh, but, but it's always a good, um, a good measuring stick uh, early on. And so we'll have an event. Uh, it'll be on the, uh, um, uh, in the touchdown club, excuse me, in the uh, club area on the fourth floor of the tower. Uh, where we've had it in the past mm -hmm. and details will be coming out here uh, we'll start pushing them out pretty hard at the end of this week and uh, time and, and information will be on our website and we'll push it out through social media as well but look forward to that it's a great opportunity to get everybody together and uh, talk about again about what the two, 2017 um, season looks like with this signing class coming in uh, and one player who uh, was a signee just four years ago and is now transitioning into his pro career is Antonio Garcia. Mm -hmm. This week getting the opportunity to play in the Senior Bowl. Always a great opportunity to get to, in front of scouts and, and NFL teams. And I know uh, he's really excited about that, but it's got to be exciting for the program to get another player in that game. No doubt about it. And I think it's, um, you know, it says a lot about our program, obviously, for him to be there and have an opportunity to be on that stage and be seen and be in front of scouts throughout the week practice-wise. Um, you know, we've got such a great history of, of um, players being successful in the NFL. And, and I really think Tony's got a great opportunity to be one of those guys. Right. I mean, he really has worked exceptionally hard, uh, especially over the past couple of years, to, to develop into one of the best in the country. Right. And um, I think as he continues to mature and, and um, uh, opportunities are, are put in front of him, he's going he's gonna to have a chance to, uh, uh, to really be special. I was reading some stuff about him today, and a lot of a lot of sites have him rated really high, maybe even a first-round pick. Yeah. So that'll be exciting to see. So. Yeah, it will be. We're we're excited for him and excited for our program. All right. Well, thank you, and uh, good luck on everything that's happening this week. Appreciate it. All right. Stay tuned for more coming up on Inside Troy Athletics. Welcome back to Inside Troy Athletics, and we're here to talk women's basketball with the head coach, and that's Coach Chandra Rigby. And Coach, last week you got to do your Arkansas swing uh, road trip, and faced Arkansas Little Rock on Thursday night. Matchup of unbeatens in the Sun Belt. Mm -hmm. it, it was a great matchup. Your team came out just a little, um, came yeah. down not on top. Right. And they were able to pick up the victory. Talk about that, that game for us. Well, the Arkansas trip is always my least favorite. That's some incredible coaches, incredible teams over there right. in Arkansas. And uh, we've, we've never won over there at UALR. So this year we felt like it could be our year. Um, and, uh, you know, they had a little bit of revenge on their mind. I do believe we beat them right. in, in the conference tournament championship. And uh, they came out ahead by three points. Um, the good news is, is we learned a lot from it. I feel like that they played really, really, really well. And other than maybe R.J. Saunders, nobody on our team really played well. Right. So we feel like we do get them back in, in Trojan Arena, and we hope to play a lot better when we play them next time. Uh, and then Saturday, you, you rebounded literally and figuratively 69 <laughs> rebounds, yes. but also a big W against Arkansas State. And that had to be good to come back yes. and get that win. And we're thankful to get that win. But again, we didn't really play well overall. Um, we have learned, though, that uh, insurance is a good thing to have by rebounding. Right. So. Uh, we took rebound into heart, especially Caitlin Ramirez, 18 rebounds in that game. But we had 69 overall, which was a record in the Convocation Center there at Arkansas State. And so uh, we're proud with our rebounding, but we got to pick other things up. And Coach, I know something you talked about earlier in the year. You kind of you were happy with your depth, but a little worried about maybe about some injuries. You've gotten some players back, and mm -hmm. they've been able to contribute, and that's got to be a big help for y'all. And that was the biggest thing in that game against Arkansas State. He has a lot of people injured. He didn't have the depth that he needed in that game. We were able to keep rotating fresh people in. So right. yeah. 
Well, and then you get to come back home, three-game homestand now, uh, facing Georgia Southern mm -hmm. on Thursday and then Georgia State on Saturday. Both teams you've faced already. Um, what do you know about them? We came out of both of those games winning. They were both very close. Uh, Georgia Southern, I believe, was two points. It came right down to the wire. We had been up by over 20 points earlier in the game, right. but allowed them to come back. He's a great coach. Um, and I'd say Arkansas State, they have great uh, athletes on their team, so anything can happen in those situations. We're going to need the Trojans to come out and support us. To get I know, yeah, you want all those fans to come out mm -hmm. and you have a great home crowd behind you. Uh, Thursday night, it's a 6 o'clock tip. Yes. And then Saturday, 2 o'clock tip, doubleheader. So great chance to come out and right. support the Trojans. I hope, we, I hope we have a good crowd. All right, Coach, thank you. Thank you. All right, stay tuned for more coming up on Inside Troy Athletics. And welcome back to Inside Troy Athletics. And we're here to talk some softball here on our final segment with the head coach, and that's Coach Beth Mullins. And Coach, uh, welcome back. I know uh, we talked to Coach Smart last week and how nice the weather's <laughs> been for y'all. It, it's got to be great, I mean, right in the midst of practice just to have this great sun, sunny weather. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. He's probably very jealous of the <laughs> softball program right now because I know they're um, – I think they start Friday. Right. And we've been going for like two weeks. So um, – I think today might be the coldest day we've had and the highest still in the mid-60s, so I cannot complain. It's a great time to get better. But you know, as soon as it starts, it's going to drop down right. and be freezing. That's just the way it works. That's why I put our first weekend in Florida, so right. we're going to stay warm. So what's it been like so far? Uh, you, you, two weeks of practice under your belt. What's it been like? It's been good. I mean, I've, I feel like we're in a really good place. The girls obviously went home and did stuff, um, worked really hard because they came back in a really good place that allowed us to kind of move on and you know get some get better at things that we had not worked on over the fall and again I you know we're young right. and I think our underclassmen have come a long way and really gotten better and just kind of understand everything and I give a lot of credit to our leadership for kind of bringing them along the way but their ability to just kind of understand everything is so much better and it's made everything run really smooth. Now is there anything right now that you're working on that you you see as a, as a weakness or maybe a strength that you just need to keep on working on? Not I mean not really I think you know we're great at a lot of things and you know not so great at some things and I think the goal is to stay great at the things you're great at and kind of improve in some aspects. I know more we're trying to put them in just a lot of game type of situations that are going to happen. And we like to try to pride ourselves in putting them through everything that could possibly happen right. in the game so you're never surprised. So, you know, a lot more situational stuff going on right now. And we actually are doing a simulated scrimmage today, just, you know, putting pitchers against hitters mm -hmm. and defenses against offenses and seeing what happens. Now, I know you mentioned the, the Florida tournament getting down there early, starting at FAU and then back here for two tournaments and then finally at Baton Rouge. Um, a lot of different teams involved in that and some very strong teams. What do you think about that early season schedule? You know, I think after last year, we were home for three weekends straight right. and it was great, but I think it kind of hurt us in the long run of just, you know, not being prepared for the unexpected thing of going on the road and maybe getting too comfortable. And I think we kind of put a really solid four weeks before conference starts this year and going down to you know FAU is going to be solid everybody that we play is going to be a great team and then mm -hmm. obviously hosting we always put on two quality tournaments here and then we end at um, LSU and most everybody we play is going to be a top 25 team and I think that's the way you want to do it you right. want to end you know getting strong before conference starts so I think it's I think it's a really good four weeks and then obviously conference you can't get much better than the Sun Belt so and you've got uh, Louisiana Lafayette, <laughs> South Alabama, a new team coming in, Coastal Carolina. So a lot of uh, good teams in this year. Any, anybody standing out? I know Louisiana Lafayette's always up there at the top. I mean, I think everything. I mean, you look through one through anything, and one or two games are separating any position. And um, if not, there was a lot of ties last year. And I just think you, you can't just show up in our conference. You've mm -hmm. got to want to compete, and you've got to show up every single game to compete. And um, it's, it's a dogfight. I right. love it. I mean, we talk about it all the time. I mean, you know, it's big girl softball, right. and I think our girls love that. And um, I think the Sun Belt should be proud. I mean, I think we are the top mid-major conference, if not better than a lot of the Power Five conferences. So it's exciting. And also a couple of uh, good non-conference mm -hmm. schedules or teams coming in during the midweek, Florida State, Southern Miss. So, again, you're continuing that in the middle of the week, you're prepping your team for those uh, Sun Belt games. Yeah, I mean, anytime you can bring in quality programs, I think Florida State will be a top five team when they come in here. Right. And, you know, we have a lot of respect for their program, and we'll go back there the next year. And I think being able to keep that going back and forth will make both teams better. And then Southern Miss, we've done the same thing. We've gone back and forth, and they've got a great coach there. And it's, it's going to be fun. Anytime you can great being, well, bring uh, great programs in for your fans, it's going to be fun. All right, Coach. Well, I know you're ready. Uh, February 10th, time to get the ball rolling. Yes, so. let's go. All right, Coach. Well, thank you for joining us. Thank you. All right, join us again next week for more here on Inside Troy Athletics.